So now we uh, move on to ayah number uh, 29. Say, now the truth has come from your Lord. Let those who wish to believe in it do so, and let those who wish to reject it do so. We have prepared a fire for the wrongdoers that will envelop them from all sides. If they call for relief, they will be relieved with water like molten metal, scalding their faces. What a terrible drink, what a painful resting place. Should I go on? Okay. No, I think uh, this ayah reminds me of uh, a totally different perspective. I, I just keep imagining because of the normality of this uh, Dajjal. Mm -hmm. the, the real question that we better understand is that, is there a one way of looking at the Jal? No, there isn't. It's, uh, it's, not, <coughs> it's not that impossible that uh, the Jal will be the, I'm just giving you a perspective here, that the Jal would be the biggest alim of uh, Quran and uh, he will be actually calling people to the Quran. Mm -hmm. And uh, he will actually have a uh, a very firm grip of not just the Quran, but uh, the message of the Quran as well. And he will be deceiving people, specifically Muslims, from the Quran. Okay. And uh, this is something which we never think about, not especially not as Muslims. We just think he's going to be talking about the Torah or the Injil or uh, that too, uh, in, in a twisted way. But why are we so closed on the fact that this Dajjal will be in the name of Quran? Why, why, why is that such a hard thing to, to swallow when we know that uh, Muslims are going to be running towards him? And uh, there is a certain movement towards a unified religion already going on in the name of yeah. humanitarianism and so on. And in the name of love and compassion and yeah. And, you know, they, they take it out from all of those books, not out as in they, they, they omit it. They, they, they bring forth the concept of love from the monotheistic books and calling uh, God as the God of mercy and God of love and care and compassion. And this could be a very good handle for uh, to call to the hearts of all of the people in the world. I mean, there is not even a single... Uh, hadith about uh, a, a grand scheme of the Jal oppressing the human beings. He will be oppressing some certain people who will be uh, the believers who are going against him. But in, in, in a general perspective, the Jal is not a tyrant. Mm -hmm. If anything, he is a, a giver of wealth. He is a, uh, he's providing sustenance. He's making it rain and he's making crops grow so on and so forth. He, he, this is a, a, a <coughs> philanthropist for, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a certain way of, of psychology. This man, is a, this man is a helper. Yeah. This man is a, 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 an apparently a merciful man. Hmm. Only a merciful man is going to do all of that, make, make it, you know, barren land, grow crops. I mean, you have to understand this is this is a little too out there. It's too visible. We just don't want to look at it. Otherwise, everything is pointing towards that psychology of, of the human being uh, at that time. Uh, and, and that psychology has to be looked into of the regular believers of the job. Those believers, I mean, this it's, it's too far-fetched to believe that the majority of the planet is running towards a tyrant. It has never happened. Yeah. Why would it all of a sudden change the psychology of the human beings? Yeah. And if it did, then this, this this is not the message for him. The Quran is the message for the regular human being. So that means the psychology of the human being is never going to change. Because the Quran is actually addressing that psychology. Yeah. So why are we actually assuming that the Jal is going to go against the psychology of the human being? So if he has to be the greatest Dajjal ever, then it should be really factored into account that the Jal is going to use the Quran, literally. And there are already like many versions of the Quran people have presented where they have taken out certain surahs and certain yeah, chapters. Yeah. 
So, and they say they're like, now this is better, you know. Even if they don't omit it, they actually sub, <clears throat> sub, subside those ayahs. Yeah. Uh, even current ulama are saying that certain ayahs were, ju were, were just for the Prophet yeah. Certain yeah. ayahs were for, for the for the certain time. Yeah. And, you know, so on. Uh, without naming anybody, you see, it's a general uh, demand of the current human psychology, the current human psychology, that the Quran does not fit the the current norms of the the, 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 yeah. the way the way we want uh, things and this is a, a a very big door that we're trying to open here instead of us tuning our psychology towards the Quran we want the Quran to change its psychology towards us and this is something which could very well be the 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 the, the handle of the jal to utilize this I'm not saying it is because if I can think about it the jal is going to over over you know supersede that thought process as well. But that's our job as Muslims to actually try and put as many options on the table. Uh, and that's our duty. Uh, I mean, I know I won't be able to pinpoint the exact mechanism of how the job is going to be. Otherwise, it's not at the job. However, us unveiling all of those algorithms that lead towards a certain thought process is going to delay the, the job's coming. Because if somebody is like me talking about this, that means... You know, some people will be listening and some people will be actually tuning the psychology again. And that's, 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 that's one person less from his army. Yeah. So, uh, again, you know, not going into the philosophy of this, but this is something which is a little too obvious for any sensible man to think that why is the Jal address, not addressing 3 billion people's book? And by that time, maybe 5 billion. Uh, the Muslims, I'm talking about the Quran here. And this is why and again the, even the bible the the whole book is filled with the, the the documentation of antichrist so this this is not at all uh i mean this should be on the table all the time that uh the jal is reciting the ayahs of quran and actually telling them because you know when this ayah whenever i read this ayah i'm thinking is this something which the jal is going to be saying that this is that murky oil do you want to drink from this even though i'm giving you the 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 water from Kosar, or or even better, the, the the real water of Jannah, and this is what the Prophet wow. himself said, that his his <laughs> hell will be he will be carrying two rivers. One yeah. is the river of fire, and one is the river of uh, water, sweet uh, heaven of his hand will be the hell, and his hell will be uh, yeah. heaven. So the the very concept of uh, him trying to persuade the Muslims to the Quran should be in a in a, a part of our our, our, our our arsenal, a psychological arsenal that yes I expect this and 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 uh, I I have to be really close to the actual people who are the scholars of the Quran who actually are preparing for for a certain certain system of uh, of 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 dawa so that you know this sort of uh, uh, event gets as delayed as possible or whatever we can do because uh, one man just opening the Quran and, and just trying to get his meaning out of it requires any kind of a scholar to just you know uh, yeah. uh, do whatever he can with them so understand uh, where I'm coming from I, I just I just want to I want I want this factor to be included in, in our, our preparation that if I read the ayah and if the jar is actually trying to convince me and I'm holding the Quran, why would he not have the power to understand the Quran as much as he wants to, or maybe he, you know, he understands it, but he's just making me deviate from it through the very ayahs. Yeah. Because if I ever talk to a Christian to try and understand how he can, or how he can be, you know, uh, brought to the right message, I need to understand his book. I can't just give a Quran to a Christian and say, hey, you know what, this is how you should look at the message. Yeah. I need to give him through his own the book of why. His own book yeah. To convince him. Yeah. So why wouldn't the Jal be doing that? <clears throat> yeah. Why will the Jal be so blatantly against the Quran and still have all the people, uh, you know, going towards uh, his message? Yeah, and I I remember like even nowadays we have a few people. I'm not going to name them, but they are like getting really famous and their followership is like uh, getting bigger and bigger. Who are translating Quran? directly from the dictionary, altogether rejecting all the hadith. And uh, then they say that the book is revealed to me, us for human beings, so we are to interpret it. And if you listen to their interpretation, it's completely different 
than how the Muslim Ummah or our scholars understand. So he like even he changes uh, who the Bani Israel really are. He even changes the meaning of who the people are, those that will get are rewarded by Allah, and those that got the punishment from Allah. He changes the meanings. He even changes the meaning of the Kaaba or its placement on the earth in everything. And uh, he's got a big massive fellowship now. So if you listen to his Quran, so he says he's the same Quran. And he's like well versed. He has a very firm grip on, on complete Quran from his memory. And uh, if you listen to his Quran, it's completely a different thing. So if another man more intelligent than him, than him will come, of course. They can put whatever meaning they want to. I mean, it has to be uh, part of his, 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 his trick. It has to be. And it, <coughs> uh, otherwise, it's not possible. See, when the Prophet said that uh, in his dream that he's mirroring Isa al Islam, yeah. and of course, Isa al Islam is going to be narrating the Quran to us. Yeah. So, why wouldn't the Jalim narrate the Quran to us? If the Prophet says, Your Lord is now one eyed, that means he's actually going to claim to be the Lord. Yeah. And no Muslim can actually believe a Lord without the Quran. Probably, so, probably he's going to be the first one to say that your Lord is not the one eyed. Maybe yeah, yeah, he's going to start with that. Yeah. Whatever yeah. we know is something which he's going to utilize, not something which we uh, already counter. Yeah. Uh, whatever we, we actually agree upon is something which, which he's going to start. This is his, 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 his first step. Okay. So, indeed, those who have believed and done righteous deeds, indeed, we will not allow to be lost the reward of any who did well in deeds. Yeah. So, uh, this is his claim against Allah's claim right here. Hmm. Literally the same claim, see, because this is the same argument. Any man is going to be claiming God is going to pray, uh, say. Wow, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I remember this uh, minister of uh, Balochistan, that lady. Mm -hmm. And we better uh, narrate this. Uh, uh, she said that uh, my father and my grandfather and my uh, uncle, my father's brothers, mm -hmm. all were uh, alim of Quran and the top ulama at that time. But uh, at that time, there was a plague in Balochistan. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she's, she's still alive right now, this minister. Mm -hmm. I think Zubeda or someone, I don't remember mm -hmm. her name. And she said uh, that, and they were told to quarant be quarantined. And then uh, the Qadianis came in and they said, if you convert to Qadianism, there's not going to be a plague that's going to hurt you because that's, that's something which we can actually prove to you. And uh, she said, all four of them converted to Qadianism. And all four of them died from that plague. In that, in that very play. Wow. See, now, when I, I heard this, I'm like, okay, hold on. <coughs> Where is wow. this promise coming from? And how, do, how come people believe in the promise? Because people want yeah. to believe in some promise. Some promise, some hope, yeah. So, if there is hopelessness, anybody who's going to be giving him hope, and this is the ayah, which is ayah number 30. Yeah. Which say, indeed, those who have believed and done righteous deeds, indeed, we will not allow to be, uh, that, 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 that those deeds to be lost. Yeah. So, this is something which is, uh, which is hope. Yeah, this is exactly what uh, what you know the previous ayah is saying as well. So first, the hadith says the land will go barren. There will be no rains, famine, and will 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 prevail on the planet. Mm -hmm. People will be helpless. This corona has actually shaken up half most of the world. Yeah, imagine if there is no, you know, uh, uh, agriculture. Yeah. All of a sudden. People will be dying, and this guy is going to be coming and being, giving them life, like Isa al Islam. Yeah. And then, why wouldn't people be actually jumping towards his religion? Yeah. Those will have gardens of perpetual residence. Wait, I'm going to read it from Abdul Harim. They will have gardens of lasting bliss graced with flowing streams. There they will be adorned uh, with bracelets of gold. There they will wear green garments of fine silk and brocade. There they will be comfortably seated on soft chairs. What a blessed reward. What a pleasant resting place. <coughs> yeah. Tell them the parable of two men. For one of them we made two gardens of grape wines, surrounded them with the date palms, and put cornfields in between. Yeah, I, 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 these two ayahs, uh, yeah, next one is you know, about the river uh, flowing, gushing between, uh, within the, them, uh, these, these gardens. Yeah. I just get a little uh, astonished by the kind of details uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us about 
what was surrounding the gardens and what was between the gardens. It is not a, I mean, there is no coincidence in the Quran. Uh, mm -hmm. There's not even an alphabet which is over and above a certain meaning. SubhanAllah. Now here we're talking about the Jal. Yeah. And then we're reading the description of the Jannah. And then we have same ahadith, exactly same ahadith about the Jal's Jannah and Jahannam. Yeah. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the actual architecture of the the gardens uh, of grapevines. Yeah. And uh, surrounded by palm trees and then separated by fields of crop. And uh, then a river gushing through boats. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just get baffled when I get to these sort of details that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Because see, in, 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 the, in the commentary of uh, Surah Kaf, no one has actually given us any detail as to why did Allah give this kind of detail. Yeah. I mean, he could have just said... Uh, um, he gave garden know, to two people. Gardens and it was green and, you know, there was, you know, a, abundance of uh, fruit and everything. Why is the whole architecture given here? It is something which is... Uh, which is, you know, which, is ra which raises a lot of uh, curiosity in me of why is ex this, this sort of specificity, this detail. I mean, the whole, I mean, I can see the map. Yeah. You read this and you can see the, the gardens. Yeah, like each you know of the two gardens produced its fruit and did not fall short thereof in anything and we caused to gush forth within them a river. <coughs> yeah, so uh, let's just go further. And so he had abundant fruit one day while talking to his friend. He said, I have more wealth and a larger following than you. And he entered his garden while he was unjust to himself. He said, I do not think that this will perish. Ever. This is an, a statement of arrogance. Any human being with current psychology of the human beings cannot possibly say that. We don't think like that. Current human beings don't think like that unless some promise some promise yeah, we're all scared of loss all the time yeah that's our current psychology yeah even atheists they know nothing's forever here yeah how come this guy is saying this he is yeah. sitting on a promise yeah you know saying some godly promise somehow come some some godly promise who's who actually but he says i do not think you see ma avannu. yeah so it means like he says that i don't think yeah i Does don't think this will ever perish hmm. You know, I mean, I know no, it's a regular it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Regularly, uh, arrogant people think that their company is not going to go bankrupt or stuff like that. But still, this is not a company. Yeah. This is a garden. Yeah. Which is dependent on a million factors, specifically the weather, which nobody controls. Yeah. Unless somebody is controlling the weather. And they have promised them something. Yeah. A yeah. guy who is controlling the weather can promise a garden uh, not to be perished. Yeah. Wow. And understand this. This is a time and the, the, the Jal is going to come in on barren lands and it's going to grow gardens over them. So anybody who's going to be following the Jal will have to say this. That I don't think this will ever perish now. Ever. Uh, abada. That's the, the word here. Never. Abada. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? This is not a, a human statement unless... He's following something which is, which he thinks is a godly. Yeah. So it's going to be literally the statement <clears throat> of every follower of the job. Literally. Ma azun. Wow. Because Allah's promise is that the garden of Jannah will never perish. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Every follower of the job is going to think that, yes, here you go. We the man the who had the, yeah. This is never going to perish. This is never. Yeah. Because it just, it, it draws from a dead barren land. Because yeah. he controls the clouds, he controls the rains, he controls everything. Wow, that's a completely different perspective, subhanAllah. Okay, so, uh, so I do not think this will ever perish or that the last hour will ever come. Even if I were to be taken back to my Lord, I would certainly find something even better there. Yeah, because I just got a symbol of the heaven here. Yeah, so I'm... I just jumped on his, you know, right hand of Jannah. Yeah. And I'm going to go find a, even a, a better return. Any follower of the Jal is going to have these two statements back to back. Wow. Okay. His companion retorted, 
Have you no, no faith in him who created you from dust, from a small drop of fluid, then shaped you into a man? But as for me, he is Allah, my Lord, and I do not associate with my Lord anyone. Uh, this opens a little door as if uh, Dajjal is not going to be able to, to you know. Fully uh, convince people of no, 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 there's going to be, uh, could be. But it seems as if Dajjal is not going to be able to uh, uh, make uh, barren women bear child, <coughs> bear children. Mm. He's going to be able to do a lot of things. It seems as if he's not going to be able to do uh, a certain thing, which is, you know, specifically to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this might just be one of those... Uh, Things that the, believer that the believers will actually will be falling still. back on. That you know what? Why don't you? Because Ibrahim alayhi salam said to uh, Nimrud. Yeah, exactly. That you know, if you uh, can produce life, yeah, then uh, why don't you make the sun come from the west? Yeah, if you are the guardian, yeah, why can't you? Yeah, do and I practically believe that you know wow. Nimrud was also doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, he was trying to raise it from the dead, and even though the commentary says something else. Because he just let go of a prisoner who was sentenced to death. He said, I gave yeah. him life. But that's in the commentary. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For all we know, he was doing something. Doing something. <laughs> so, so he that gave time. him, a, tested him through something that he know, knew, Ibrahim alayhi salam, that yeah. he can't do. Yeah. He and, do so this. yeah. and this is another okay. argument as to what believers can say at the jal, to the jal, that, you know what, you can do this. You can make it rain. Okay. Why don't you make the sun come from the west? Yeah. And by the way, that hadith actually does signify he won't be able to do that because he's going to be stopping time, right? He's yeah. not going to be reversing time. If he splits, uh, makes the sun go in reverse, he will be reversing time. Yeah. So that's another argument a Muslim can give to the Jal that, you know what, why don't you make the sun rise from the west? No, it does not necessarily reverse the time. It will only reverse the cycle of the day. Sun is rising from the west and yeah, but but we have a, a certain lock on his time. He's going, his first day is going to be for a year, right? Yeah, but what I'm saying is, through the Quran, we can see of whoever has claimed to be God, hmm. or whatever God's arguments were, you know, saying, or maybe he can reverse it, maybe he can, and he's going to use that as an argument. See, Ibrahim said that Nim, Nimrod cannot do that. Look, and me doing this, I'm, that's why I'm your Lord. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, the Quran itself has so many uh, ways the Quran is speaking to us as to how it's going to, how we should be able to, to, to deal with these sort of situations. Okay. If only when you entered your garden, you had said, this is God's will. There is no power not given by God. Although you see, I have less wealth and offspring than you. Which ayah are you reading? Uh, ayah number 39. Yeah. And uh, my Lord may well give me something better than your garden and send thunderbolts on your garden from the sky so that it becomes a heap of barren dust. Yeah. Or is water may Since sing, it's an argument of a believer, so we're not going in detail. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, just a reminder for our um, friends uh, watching this uh, series, Alhamdulillah. Is that this is not the tafsir of the Quran. The tafsir of the Quran you could find. Um, there are lots of tafsirs written. This is a psychological perspective of us, the Muslims in the time of Dajjal, through the Quran, inshallah. Okay, so, or its water may sink so deep into the ground that you will never be able to reach it again. And his fruits were encompassed by ruin, so he began to turn his hands about in dismay over what he had spent on it while it had collapsed upon its uh, trellises and said, Oh, I wish I had not associated with my Lord anyone. And there was for him no company to aid him other than Allah, nor could he defend himself. Since, uh, of course, this is something which uh, the man has learned a lesson. Yeah. So it, it doesn't really hold uh, any con context to our, our, our session. So okay. that's why we're just going through it because. Okay, inshallah. This is a. Uh, so, ayah number 44. In that situation, the only protection is that of God, the true God. He gives the best rewards and the best outcome. And, okay, yeah. 
here it ends and I, I guess a new story starts no no it's number ayah number 45 now and present to them the example of the life of this world is being like rain which we send down from the sky and the vegetation of the earth mingles with it and then it becomes dry remnants scattered by the winds and Allah is ever over all things perfect in ability hmm. wealth and children are but adornment of the worldly life but the enduring good deeds are better to your Lord for reward and better for one's hope. One day we shall make the mountains move and you will see the earth as an open plain. We shall gather all people together, leaving no one. Uh, Sahil, I would like your perspective on this moving of mountains. Because I heard, I remember in one of our discussions, uh, you did mention some of a different mechanism of why the uh, mountains will move on a certain day on the day of judgment yeah like the scientific phenomena like one most common one is that there will be no pull of gravity but then if there is no force of gravity then even human beings will be flying mm. yeah but we need to we will we, on that day we'll be running you know we'll be on the ground but yeah, it's yeah. the mountains which will be floating like the moths or the wool, uh, as it's mentioned in the Quran somewhere else. I remember you did say something in a, some other session. Do you remember? Yeah, because that, but that's going to uh, we can we can talk about that. Mm -hmm. But that uh, uh, off the topic. Yeah, that's going to take us real off topic. But mm -hmm. the real perspective is that the kind of wording Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is used uh, in Surah Al Qariyah, and you know, uh, whenever Allah Subhanahu wa Taala describes uh, the very day of yeah. uh, the biggest catastrophe. Uh, we'll have to pick out all of those words and see uh, and reverse engineer it to see how we can actually create a picture of this and what actually would be going on. But, you know, but the, the fact is that by that time, it's going to be too late to do anything about anything. <laughs> yeah. So let's yeah. just not uh, put that into <laughs> yeah. this session. Yeah. Okay. And they will be presented before your Lord in rows and he will say, you have certainly come to us just as we created you the first time, but you claimed that we would never make for you an appointment. The record of their deeds will be laid upon and you will see the guilty dismayed at what they contain, saying, Woe to us! What a record this is! It does not leave any deed, small or large, unaccounted for. They will find everything they ever did laid in front of them. Your Lord will not be unjust to anyone. Yeah, one thing that we're missing out on is that, see, all of these are uh, the ayahs of uh, the Day of Judgment, post-Day of Judgment. Uh, the Jal at that time, uh, you, you better understand that it is, there is no prophecy about the Jal's downfall. The Jal is going to be killed at his peak. Yeah. So there is no way of us using these ayahs hmm. as a, an account for believers to say that, see, we told you this is not going to remain forever. And, you know, the sinking of the garden in the water and uh, the water in the garden, and, you know, he won't be able to cultivate anything because the three ayahs before, that is the same thing that happened yeah. to that guy with the yeah. big garden. So, but since, the world's still gonna be like uh, after, even after the jaws. Yeah, yeah, right? but uh, no, but there, there, there's no one gonna be. Yeah, but there. there's no point of uh, us talking about post the jaws because at that time, yeah. Isa Islam is gonna Isal take care of yeah. the, the real sessions, not this session. So, uh, at the time of the jaws, uh, there will be. It doesn't seem as if people of the jaws will have any re uh, regret. Uh, it doesn't seem as if. Uh, that people of the Jal will see the fall of the Jal's uh, traps and anything that, uh, you know, the, the, the Dajjal will stay. The, the, the doings of the Jal are not going to have any sort of side effects to the people of the Jal. Mm -hmm. He will be killed while he's the king. So if if the jal was you know just a, all his claims yeah yeah any of this claim people yeah. if I had if I am let's assume Khudana Khasta a believer of the jal yeah I'm gonna be remain I'll remain a believer of the jal because I will not find any flaw in whatever he was doing or saying yeah. until of course Isa Islam comes and kills him yeah now that is a that is a problem till the last second of the jal yeah so that's how complete of a fitna he is yeah. he's not gonna have the last day as the day of you know of uh, Unveiling his fitnas and you know people coming to to yeah. the real light and truth. It's never going to happen. So the killing of the jal should mark the end of this fitna. No, 
You have to understand this is a this is what I'm trying to get you at. There'll be, there'll be still people defending him. So of course, he's the biggest oh, king. He, he was, was a just ruler. They yes, killed him. This and extremist. this terrorist comes in oh, and you know Al Qaeda yeah, comes yeah. and kills him, or Taliban kill him, or whoever. I don't know they're gonna, what they're going to be calling because this at that time, the Jal is the most beloved person. Wow. Yeah, and Isa Islam is just comes in from the heavens and just you know. Uh, um, puts all of that, you know, that that <laughs> assumed Jannah, yeah. Uh, yeah. and then makes it useless for for the people. So, or maybe you know, people will remain keep all of those gifts of the Jal uh, as souvenirs. No, no, as gardens and whatever, <laughs> and uh, it just just you know, will will come to to light uh, of Isa Islam, yeah. and uh, Isa Islam is going to uh, make them utilize all yeah. of those things that the Jal gave. Could be, I don't know, but. Yeah. This is the, the that's not the point. The point is, till the last second, the jal is going to be at the jal, and it could be one of the biggest problems after the jal is gone, because most of the world is following him blindly. They're yeah. they're benefiting from whatever he gave them. Yeah. And all of a sudden, this one guy comes in with thirty thousand people, and then he comes in with his own mentor calling Jesus. Yeah. And then he says, uh, "I'm the real Jesus," yeah. and uh, all of a sudden. Our king is dead. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Even so, now, we know that there are many tyrant rulers in this dunya. And there are so many people who are fighting them or against them. But at the same time, there always is. we have so much bigger population venerating them. And even if they are put into jails or exiled, even there are uh, people Nazis, who are always, Nazis always were die hard them. lovers of Hitler. Yeah. Nazis were proud of being Nazis. Yeah. Even they were not like, you know. Two-faced hypocrites. Yeah. They were fully in the the movement. Yeah. So uh, it's 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 something we better understand that the biggest yeah. fight will be <laughs> will be right after the jal is dead. This fitna is uh, going to carry its uh, fruits way way more than uh, the time of the jal. Okay. Now moving on to ayah number fifty, and mention uh, when we said to angels, prostrate to Adam. And they prostrated except for Iblis. He was of the jinn and departed from the command of his Lord. Then will you take him and his descendants as allies other than me while they are your enemies? Wretched is it is for the wrongdoers as an exchange. Okay, I just want to make a point here because a lot of Muslims believe that Iblis was an angel who turned into Iblis. Yeah, but here it mentions very clearly that he was among the jinn. Okay. Uh, yeah, but see now that's that's this this ayah has uh, another uh, key here. Mm -hmm. uh, this ayah all of a sudden appears mm -hmm. as a story of Adam al -Islam. Adam al -Islam and Iblis. Mm -hmm. This story is coming without any context of 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 you know the whole. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, uh, we, we we should look into the fact that. What kind of uh, happenings were going on in detail uh, at the time of the creation of Adam and uh, yeah. why would he please become, uh, you know, uh, did whatever, uh, do whatever he did, and what does that got to do with, you know, uh, all of this, uh, all of what we're talking about? Hmm. So it's 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 quite a it's quite a uh, because this I didn't come here by coincidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course not. So. Uh, you know, and he says, "Why is Kulna? Why is Kulna? That means, you know, uh, when we when we said to the angels, all of a sudden, hmm. hmm. why is mean oh, when yeah, when when we said to the angels? Uh, so it's it's like, uh, you know, all of a sudden a new story with such a power is starting. Yeah, you know. Uh, so we, we we should look into it. I'm going to connect it with the next eye, and then I'm going to tell you what the details is. So go on. Okay. I did not make them witness to the creation of the heavens and the earth, or to be, or to the creation of themselves, and I would not have taken the misguiders as assistants. So this could be uh, one of those, uh, uh, you know, okay. uh, angles mm -hmm. where uh, the whole. Uh, the world will be believing against whatever the creation of Adam al was. Yeah. Uh, you know, more like evolution and everything. 
more like, uh, you know, a new approach towards where the human beings came from and, and a totally different spin on who created, uh, you know, how did the, how the human being actually were created and so on. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, Allah is saying like about the, the Iblis and his followers that I did not make them witness to the creation of the heavens and the earth or to the creation of themselves. And I would not have taken the misguided as, as assistance. Yeah, that's 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 what, I, what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, and warn of the day when he will say, "Call my partners, whom you claimed, and they will invoke them, but they will not respond to them, and we will put between them a valley of destruction." Uh, yeah. Before we go to this, uh, let me just give you a little detail of what I'm talking about in the last two ayahs. See, uh, if somebody claims that you know. This is how the process started. Don't worry, I was there. You know what I'm saying? I did that. Or I'm, I'm the, uh, the viceroy of Allah. Or I'm the first creation of Allah. Uh, you know, so on and so forth. Whatever, whoever gives whatever account. This ayah actually nullifies any and everything. You know what I'm saying? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not put any witness in the creation of the heavens. There was no, no one. Uh, when, uh, when the... When the first ever creation was created, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith says, Jibreel alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, go and visit my heaven. Because heaven has been created. And go and visit hell. And there's a big hadith in Bukhari about this. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, there is no living being that can actually come and say that, you know, this is how the whole thing started. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Be it making of Adam or whatever. Nobody yeah. can actually say that. So mm. this is something which is which is very clearly being told in this ayah. The psychology is very clear that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create any witness. Ma ashhadutum ma ashhadtuhum khalaqa samawati wal ard wa la khalaqa anfusihim wa ma kunta muttakhid mudillina. This is such a, a big claim which counters every other claim of any other person who thinks he knows the, the whole story of how everything was created. Yeah. You know, you, you, so this is why uh, anyone who claims to be a prophet would not be able to say anything because no prophet has ever claimed that, you know, this is how it cr was created. Yeah. No one who claims to be God can possibly say anything about how it started. See, when, the, yeah. when Darwin comes and says, this is how it started, is actually literally, this Darwinistic approach is literally uh, a claim that, yeah, we, we are, you know, aware of how it started. This is a fact. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's their approach, yeah. Yeah, that's their approach. And yeah. they never claim to be God. Assuming yeah. that, you know, if somebody claims to be God and it says, you know what, this is how it started and just plays the whole movie in front of us. Yeah. You know, just to try and show us how he came into being or, you know. The creation. Uh, you know, of the Jal. Hmm. Of how how it all ends at him, or maybe he's the one who started it. This is why this, this these two ayahs become a little more relevant, because this entry of uh, the creation of Adam is a little too sudden. Hmm. It's not subtle at all. Hmm. So this is why I'm, I I always get baffled as to oh why did these ayahs all of a sudden just appear? Because the last time this. Uh, uh, this uh, thing happened when when two ayahs op suddenly appeared. There was uh, the inshallah, inshallah. Yeah. Yes. All of a sudden, this this, this happens here right here, right yeah. now. Yeah. And uh, we better understand of how come all of a sudden off topic yeah. ayah comes in and places yeah. itself right in the middle of a story. Yeah. Okay. Ayah number fifty-two. Mm-hmm. And warn of the day when he will say, no, I, I read it already, 53. And the criminals will see the fire, they will not find from it a way elsewhere. Yeah, we covered that in the last one, yeah. And we have certainly diversified in this Quran for the people from every kind of example. But man has never been most of the anything prone to dispute. Abdul Halim says, in this Quran, we have presented every kind of description for people, but man is more contentious than any other creature. That's the exact opposite of what the international is saying. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. You know, what, what, what's, what's, how does that mean? So yeah, Abdul Lim is right on this account that we are going to dispute any and everything. 
Yeah. We just have it in us to just try and yeah. counter argue everything. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, since there is no witness of what I, how I did this, uh, there is no way for you to know. There is nobody who is going to know anything uh, about, on, the about uh, the creation unless, of course, yeah. Allah tells him himself. Now that guidance has come to them, what stops these people believing in asking forgiveness from their Lord before the fate of early peoples annihilates them or their torment confronts them? Which ayah are you reading? I, I did 55. Yeah, see, this is the difference of translations. Not even a word of this. <laughs> okay, yeah. you have Abdul Halim open? No, I have a totally different. Uh... <laughs> okay, okay, I'll move to the ayah number 56 now. No, 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 let me just see what. Uh... Arabic? Yeah, go on, that's next ayah. 56? Yeah. Okay. Abdul Halim. We only send messengers to bring good news and to deliver warning, yet the disbelievers seek to refute the truth with false arguments and make fun of my messages and warnings. Yeah, so it's an attribute of every messenger. They do not uh, uh, claim any responsibility of any uh, hidayah of anybody. Uh, they're just uh, Bashiram or the, the Nazirans. Yeah. Who could be more wrong than the person who is reminded of his Lord's messages and turns his back on them, ignoring what his hands are storing up for him in the hereafter. We have put covers over their hearts so they cannot understand the Quran and we put heaviness in their ears. Although you call them to guidance, Prophet, they will never accept it. So, uh, every time we hear about the seal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the hearts, uh, it just, you know, makes me wonder as to what's going to happen to, to the loved ones of the believers, because that'll be a, a black and white differential between people who believe in the Dajjal and don't believe in the Dajjal. Both of those parties will be actually claiming to be on the right path. Yeah. So much so that uh, uh, believers might just come into some doubt, but those people are never going to come into any doubt because they will have a guy performing miracles right in front of them. I think it's that's it, what even Allah now the, the the case is the same with us. Like it's Muslims who are always in doubt. This is right or this is wrong. But the other side, they are yeah. very sure, very confidently going on with their aims. Yeah. Okay. And we, we were still even arguing what to do, what should we do? Some say do this, as a Muslim do that. Well, at least they're trying. I'm talking about people who are totally convinced that, you know, there is no such thing as Quran or Hadith or, you know, uh, yeah, those are the people uh, which Allah is saying we have placed over their hearts a covering. Yeah, and your Lord is the forgiving, full of mercy. If he were to impose blame upon them for what they earned, he would have hastened for them the punishment. Rather, for them is an appointment from which they will never find an escape. Hmm. That is uh, I number 58, 59 now. Just like the former communities we destroyed for doing wrong, we set an appointed time for their destruction. Moses said to his servant, I will not rest until I reach the place where the two seas meet, even if it takes me years. I think the story of Musa and Khidr starts from here. Yeah, that's a that's a very certain session. story. Yeah, let's just stick to the last ayah in those and those cities. Yeah, but tilkal kura. This is something. Yeah, limahlikihim. Ah, limahlikihim. Ah, means an appointed time. The cities will be destroyed. Destruction here. No matter what. So, uh, we are going to uh, start the story of Musa right after this. Uh, and we're not going to, uh, actually we'll do it in the next session, of course. Um, but the lesson for today's uh, session is very clear. That uh, <coughs> there are certain ways of us looking at the Jal. And the primary way is so uh black and white that i i'm afraid that the jal is going to gray the hell out of everything 
And we think we're going to be actually thinking he's going to use blacks and whites and that, you know, do not read the Quran. Quran is not the book of God. I come up with a new book or, you know, I've reincarnated or restructured the whole message from all three books. That's not how it's going to work. Uh, he will be using all of those books separately for all of those followers of those very books. And this is why we need to really understand of how, how, uh, we should know what is the seal of those hearts. And uh, also what kind of uh, avenues the deception is going to come from in terms of our understanding of the philosophy. The story of Adam keeps keeps haunting me, uh, this ayah, uh, when I think about at that time, of what kind of knowledge, what kind of arrogance would people have about, you know, of their belief as to how this whole source of creation and the creation and the end of the creation mm -hmm. and you know the hell and heaven concept will be polluted altogether all of this is all have hell and heaven and and you know uh from the gardens to the you know to the to the next ayahs of how people will be actually believing that they are not only inside heaven but will be going to heaven even if this perishes at some level as well because even if it doesn't perish they will know that they will perish so they will be going towards he heaven. So this is something which is uh, which is a lesson in these two, uh, in these 10, maybe yeah. we did more than 10 more actually. Than 10, yeah. <clears throat> so we didn't go in detail because it was just a basic psychological way of uh, us to create a awareness of what kind of psychological. There's actually uh, nothing more basic than these. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we, 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 I just want you to all understand that uh, there are so many things that, uh, <laughs> that are complicated and uh, a little confusing in terms of understanding and constructing our psychology in terms of how it started or what what is ghab, what is beyond ghab, and so on and so forth. And but and, and, and all this time we always undermine the fact that the Jal could be using the most simplest things. Yeah. Maybe he's not even going to address any sort of complications. Why would he? Prophets never do that. You think he's going to come up with a new technique of how to become a prophet? No, people won't be able to do that because the perfect psychology of Dawa it was used by the prophets. Why wouldn't he use that? That's the most effective psychology anyway. 90% of the world still believes in all the prophets. Yeah. Why wouldn't he use the psychology of the prophets and sim hit us where it's... It's assumed to be right that it's, it's a basic, simple fact of the Quran. These ayahs is basic. You just said it. Understand yeah. how, how the Jal might just be pulling off that basic card and under addressing the simplicity of things rather than putting evolution into the spin or, you know, science and okay. astrophysical concepts to just try and train yeah. and impress and inspire people. No. It could be the basic ayahs of Iman and, you know, he'll just be uh, narrating all of those people just to soften the hearts and making sure most of the people are following him. Most people do not even know what complications are. Most people are simple people. Yeah. And when the ayah says uh, most ulama and uh, women will be following at the jal, you know, this just goes to show that, you know, he'll be using more of a, a, a dawa to the heart rather than the brains. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And simplicity yeah. opens the, the, the doors to the hearts. Yeah. So we, we should always think that the Jal is going to have uh, such a, a, a an easy access to people. Yeah. And, you know, people don't even know what Surah Kaf is. They just know that, you know, there's one Kalama and then there's this one Prophet. Most of the people don't even bother. Those are the people who are not going to be convinced as to, oh my God, show us the miracles. The regular people don't ask for miracles. Regular people ask for appeal. Yeah. That's it. And that appeal, if it's there, they're going to believe you. So this is something, you know, which, which, which haunts me the most because we all, so we never still we, have so many spiritual healers in Muslims and Christians. Yes, still everywhere. Hindu, that's that's the easiest way to thousands and millions thousands and millions of millions followers. Yeah. Because, uh, those guys don't do any miracles. Yeah. They're not even qualified to even recite their own books properly, you know. Yeah. But still they have millions of followers. So the Jal could be a regular Joe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A, a Darvesh. Yeah. And people, and we, we're, we're looking for Stephen Hawkins and Dawkins <clears throat> and, you know, Darwin and everything. And just see how works. The Jal is going to look at 
you know, oh, he's going to come for the, for the elite. No, maybe he's not going to take care about the elite. Maybe his movement is going to be just like uh, the movement of any prophet and he's going to gather up the poor and, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. So, I mean, this, this is the best way of deception, coming through yeah. the actual core of the, the righteousness. Yeah. So, uh, as the Prophet said, you know, uh, in the time of fitan, even if you look into the fitan, you'll be catching that. The intensity of the fitan is going to be so much. Wow. Just researching about it is going to, you know, take you away and throw you right in the middle of the fitan. So, I, I just don't want anyone to think that Dada is going to be a, a physicist or a, a rocket scientist. He could be a, the, a, a totally illiterate man with the following of billions. And he will be like, Sahil, you, you're talking too complicated, man. Just sit down. Let's just believe in some simple things. Yeah, and love. He love, humanity. care, and could be anything. Could yeah. be anything. And he'll be opening the Quran and, you know, telling me basics. And, and, and that video will be viral and billions and people will be cursing me that, you know what? Why are you cursing a, a simpleton, a regular man with, Absolutely no harm, no negativity yeah. attached to this guy. So you're too aggressive, man. Yeah. You know, you're too complicated. You're talking about too much mathematics and science. And, you know, maybe people who are talking about these complicated stuff to just try and decode them, maybe they'll be termed at the jal in the time of the jal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, what better way of. <laughs> You know, utilizing everything about the Hadith and the Quran. And, you know, he's the first guy who will be spotting the Jals. You know, <laughs> he maybe he could be the first guy. Like, I just discovered the Jal. Look at this guy, how he's trying to twist the meaning of the Quran. And people will be like, yeah. So, it's 99 times he does that. And people believe everything he has to say about the Quran or the Bible. And all of a sudden, he's going to twist the last thing. And people are never going to know. Yeah. You know, and we'll be just, you know, here discussing things and all of that. And, you know, uh, you know, just like we call the, you know, and, and we, I, I see a lot of videos about a lot of people that this alim is Illuminati and this guy is Freemason. <laughs> so, you know, all of the believers will be tagged like that. And then this guy will be simplifying. This guy is in the payroll of Saudi. Yeah, so on, you know. Could be. So, and and by the time uh, we realize it will be too late. Yeah. This is how our regular people think. Jazakallah khair sahil inshallah inshallah we will yeah the, the, uh, the next session is the most important session <laughs> yeah. because the musa story actually yeah. uncovers uh, so much so much that i actually i have a strong strong notion that uh, the next story gives us the door from where he's going to come in and out this yeah. is how important this this next uh, set of ayahs is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, the, in, this, in this next session, in the, the next hour verses, literally describe the doorway <laughs> towards two dimensions. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> wow. this is... Uh, Amazing things are coming. Inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Uh, we'll see you inshallah in the next episode. Inshallah.